Hey there guys, this is Slamzeron, aka YouTube's Tosuke, and now it's time to continue our, um, really long review of Dragon Ball Super, because I'm doing it by arc as opposed to just doing one long thing, so time to talk about the latest arc that just wrapped up, or at least as far as I'm concerned, it's wrapped up, um, because we're getting into the, uh, it's this, it's kind of interesting. The show's doing, like, big arcs, and then, like, it has a few episodes that are kind of, uh, they're just sort of, like, chill episodes, and those are generally the ones that are probably the most humorous and fun. And though this arc in particular was, uh, pretty action-packed. And, of course, the arc I'm talking about is the Shampa arc, or I guess we can call it the Universe 6 Tournament arc. I'm probably just gonna call it the Shampa arc. Um, or... I'll I'll figure something out. I don't want to make the video title too long, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk about it. And I won't go too far into the story synopsis just so that I can kind of keep things rolling a little bit and get to the actual like review part. But to keep to sum it up really quickly, essentially, uh, uh, the God of Destruction of Universe Six, uh, Shampa, who we have known about since like. Uh, the beginning of the uh, series of this particular one, uh, Dragon Ball Super, because they've been kind of teasing him a bit, him and uh, Vados, and of course people who've been reading the uh, the uh, manga adaptation, they're a little bit ahead. I think some stuff is a little different about uh, about stuff, but um, like specific, I don't know any specific details, um, because I haven't been reading. It. I've just been watching the show because I feel like that's sort of like the main thing. But basically. Um, Beerus and Shampa decide to hold like a big tournament between their universes, uh, where the winner gets to make a wish using the Super Dragon Balls. And there will be spoilers in this, uh, but spoiler alert: Goku and his gang did win. <laughs> uh, how they end up winning the final battle is a little silly, but um, it's this entire arc is a little strange in how it was presented. I think I think there are some things they could have fixed. Um. The first fight is with uh, Goku and uh, Botamo, who's like a giant Winnie the Pooh, Majin Buu-like thing. Who, by the way, Majin Buu, he comes in, but he falls asleep during the written test, because they have to take a written test, because Vegeta's like, Oh, we have to fight the smartest of warriors. They have to be at least competent. And so he has to make them do a test. And I don't remember how Goku passes, I think. Like, they just... I don't remember specifically. Um... And uh, of course, it's uh, it's for those who it's it's Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo because Gohan had like a conference meeting, so he couldn't make it. Though he was actually been training with Piccolo, and he even goes back to his uh, tall hair that he did, um, with when he uh went um into his like ultimate form, his when the Elder Kai like gave him like his uh, did his unlock potential thingy. He he goes back to that, but he couldn't make it. And so he, they end up had to substitute Piccolo in, um, and Majin Buu was uh, going as well. But of course, he ended up falling asleep during the entire thing, so he didn't participate, um, which is uh, a little unfortunate. Fortunate. It would have been nice to maybe see um, Majin Buu um, fight somebody. Uh, I don't know. I don't necessarily think he needed to be there. But it it would have been nice if they if he had do, did something. I was actually a little um disappointed in that. But there's another thing that was kind of disappointing. But uh, anyway, first fight, uh, Goku and Botamo, and they duke it out. Goku wins, obviously. Botamo's whole thing was that you know he he was his body was like basically like rubber, I think, to where like regular attacks uh wouldn't hurt him. From what I remember, it was pretty early on. Um. And, but yeah, Goku wins. Then the next fight is uh, with uh, a guy who looks like Frieza named Frost, who is initially uh, portrayed as being the complete opposite of Frieza. He's even voiced by uh, Ryusei Nakao, so he sounds like Frieza as well. I'm, I imagine there's probably some differences in like the performances. Uh, but that's actually kind of something I didn't really like about this whole uh, universe thing. They do the parallel universe thing like... We all expect it, and as you can see in the freaking picture, if you can even see it, because I've got the logo kind of covering up a bit. And for those who care, it's the uh, um, it's the uh, 
title card, the episode title card, basically. Um, um, and what I didn't really like, because honestly, I didn't really want them to do parallel universe stuff because I felt like that would have been a little too, it wouldn't have been as creative as just being a, a like a, a neighboring universe. And it's, it's kind of a mix of both worlds because the way it works is like, you know, every universe is a little bit different, but the ones that add up to, I think it's like 13. Yeah, I think it's 13, 7 plus 6. Uh, the ones that add up to, I think, like 13 or whatever. Um, or Yeah, 13. Oh, yeah, that's true, because 6 is 6 is 12. <laughs> I'm not good at math. But uh, anyway, uh, the ones that add up to 13 are parallel universes, while the rest of them... Are like so they're all parallel universes, but they're all also kind of different in a way. I didn't really like that because I felt like I, I just don't like the idea of parallel universe stuff. I know Dragon Ball Multiverse is like, in my opinion, the one exception where it's actually kind of interesting because they throw in so many different possibilities. But here, it's like, you know, Kaba, you know, he comes from a universe where the Saiyans aren't necessarily like ruthless. And uh, they can't go Super Saiyan, or he can at least. And uh, he lives on planet Sal Salda, you know, Salad, um, which was uh, from what from what I remember Vegeta saying, uh, being uh, like their first base or something. Um, I actually kind of liked uh, Vegeta and Kaba's uh, first exchange early on, where they sort of talk about Saiyan history and sort of like compare a little bit, and how Vegeta talks about like, oh, Saiyans are ruthless killers. And Kaba's like, but in mine, they're actually nice. And, uh, you know. Uh, I That's the main reason why I didn't like it, like the whole parallel. Cause I, I didn't want to have too many, like, oh, it, it's the same world, but it's different. Because in, like, Universe 6, um, Shampa's um, world, um, the, the Earth was, uh, like, basically destroyed. And uh, so Shampa actually ends up getting jealous of beers because they have an Earth and they get to have Earth's nice food. And actually, the food that they try is cup noodles, which is kind of funny. And even in uh, Dragon Team's uh, subtitles, which they were actually very, very punctual with this. So if by some cosmic coincidence, <laughs> Cosmo, this isn't Saint Seiya. Anyway, um, if, if, it, if by any coincidence, Dragon Team, you happen to be listening to this, you guys did real good. Um they even called it cup noodles, because um, it's like you know it's it's cup noodles. That's basically what it is. And I thought it was funny how like, because uh, Goku and Vegeta and I think Beerus and um, Whis are also given uh, their lunch for cup noodles, but they and they use chopsticks while Vados and Shampa use uh, I think spoon. It's either spoons or forks. Um, I think probably fork. Now, I think spoons. Like they eat it like. They scoop it up. They don't, like, do the thing with noodles where they twist it and, like, wrap it around the fork or whatever. Or the spoon. I guess you can do it with a spoon. That's kind of harder with a spoon, though. Um, although I've gotten to where I'll, like, scoop my ramen these days, even if I'm eating it with a, uh, a fork. Um, let's see. And they're all like, oh, wow, this food's really good. And so there's a bit of jealousy there. Um. But yeah, ultimately, to kind of get back on track, I didn't really, I I'm, wasn't really a fan, thankfully, of the uh, Parallel Universe, I mean. Uh, thankfully, the only there were only really two characters that were, um, that were like, sort of like altered versions of Universe 7 people, that being Frost and Kaba. Uh, they're both original characters, obviously, like, the only one that's really meant to be a parallel is probably Frost, just because, uh, you know, he kind of looks like Frieza and all that stuff. And because of that, uh, it's kind of funny because the next fight is actually Goku and uh, Frost, and Goku's all like, transform, and Frost's like, how do you know I can transform? Because a guy who we fought, who's your same race and shit, can do that, and like he transforms, and he has, two, he has three forms. His regular form, which looks like first form Frieza, his second form, which looks like... Um, the third form Frieza, the one that actually looks like the alien, like with the hot dog head, and then the final one that looks like Frieza's final form, which is like that iconic form that he's always in. Um, 
And that's why I was like, I should warn you. When I turn into this farm, I get evil and shit. Um, of course, it actually turns out that he's basically Frieza. <laughs> he's basic. That's that was probably a big the start of like the big turnoffs because like, oh, you thought I was nice. I'm actually, I'm actually sending out soldiers and like destroying planets and making my money by like doing the construction thing. So he's basically running a giant scam. And I'm just like, really. You know, it's it's it, yeah, it's interesting that they do a twist like that, but it's like, you know, he's basically Frieza. That's basically all he is, and he's able to defeat Goku because he has like these little like, like these little pin things in his arms that he can like hit people with, and it'll make him sleepy and shit. Um, and so Goku loses, and then uh, Piccolo is the next one to fight to fight for us. And I actually thought this this is sort of the one com- big complaint that I had about the entire arc. Um, um, cause they, they actually did some pretty cool stuff with this one, but here with Piccolo, you know, they, the way it's sort the fight is sort of, perf- I guess portrayed or performed or whatever, how the fight goes. It kind of seems like that Piccolo is all like, Oh, I'm not going to be able to defeat this guy. Who's like Frieza. I need to fucking charge my special beam cannon really hard to, like, just knock him out, because I'm not strong enough, me, me, me. Well, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like Piccolo, at that at this point, would be strong enough to at least defeat Frieza, because if you think back to the the show in the original series, he, at his, when he uh, fused with Nail, he was able to go toe-to-toe with Frieza in his second form. Um, And you might be thinking, well, that may be true, but Frost's uh, form that he's in when he fights Piccolo is the equivalent of Frieza's Fauna form. I understand that, but Piccolo's been doing a lot more training since then. Let's 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 do the math here. Like we've got, you know, not counting Goller Jr. because that's filler, but like the Android stuff which he trained for, um, and then the Majin Buu stuff which we assume he trained for, um, for like that tournament thing in the beginning, and maybe even the Cell games a little bit as well, um. And then we have, uh, you know, the two movies, which uh, are like the beginning of uh, Dragon Ball Super. So he's Piccolo, and he's been training with Gohan as well. So, you know, regardless of whether or not he's actually sort of improving or just maintaining his ability as a fighter, I feel like Piccolo should at least be able to handle Final Form Frieza. Golden Frieza, probably not. Maybe not even one hundred that 100% thing where he gets all buff or whatever, but like... Final form, like, we're talking regular final form Frieza. I feel like Piccolo should be able to handle that now. Um, and I feel like, you know, that's a bit of a problem with the series. That's probably the biggest problem with the series as a whole is that the Saiyan characters are sort of overlapping everyone else. Because, you know, they have, like, their intense stamina. And because of that, they've been able to push themselves, like, far beyond a human limit. But Piccolo's not a human, so he should be a... You know, he should be a bit, um, a bit, um, uh, a bit higher up, I think. Like, I feel like, you know, if Goku's in first place, if Vegeta's, I know there's going to be some, I'll probably address that near the end, um, uh, cause I, I don't remember if I talked about, oh yeah, I think I did, cause yeah, I'm, t- I'm, th- the episodes in particular that I'm thinking about is, uh, um, stuff in Resurrection F. That's one thing about this arc that's pretty that was actually kind of cool. They jumped to it pretty quickly. There was there wasn't like I don't think there was hardly any sort of like uh filler episode to like calm things down. They jump right into the Shampa arc and I think that was probably a good thing considering this is like this is the first original material of the arc. Um and I, I will talk a little bit about like the stuff just to kind of catch up a little bit I, or at least I'll c- talk about what all I've seen um because I think I don't know I, I feel like until we get to the next big arc which is supposed to actually be kind of interesting given who's returning um that each episode might be like kind of self-contained for the time being because I remember like I saw like the thing and like the actual uh title card was different it had the character Monaka in it who is introduced as uh being the strongest person Beerus ever fought, so Goku would be at second. Of course, there's a thing about that. Um, but yeah, I feel like 
to get back on track, Piccolo should be um should have been able to do well. And I don't care if he necessarily loses. Like he he loses the actual fight, but he wins the uh he wins the uh actual like official match due to uh Frost with his little thing who's it's um but I was really looking forward to that because I'm thinking like, oh, it would be so cool to see Piccolo actually do damage and, you know, and th- but then like once Frost is revealed to being like a, a douchebag, Vegeta's all like, I want to fight Frost, but Piccolo won. No, he forfeits. Isn't that right, Piccolo? And then Piccolo just like stares him down. He's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. And it's like, you could just kind of tell that like he... He didn't really want to do that, but he understands that Vegeta can, like, beat the shit out of him. Um, And that kind of pissed me off. It's like, at the same time, I kind of liked it because it sort of brought up the fact that, well, Veg- uh, Piccolo probably doesn't like Vegeta. Like, out, out, of the t- out of all the good guys, the two people who probably like uh, Vegeta the least are, um, or three, we'll say, uh, probably a Yamcha, Tien and uh, Piccolo. Those are probably the three people who like him the least. I, I don't know about Yamcha, just because I don't. there doesn't seem to be any sort of, like, thing about it. But I remember with in the Android, like, in the Cell stuff, Piccolo and Tien, they didn't want to wear the Saiyan armor. You know? You could argue that maybe with Piccolo, it was a bit of residue from Nail, but... And that's, that, that is possible, but I feel like... Because it was kind of hinted that, like, even though, like, Nail's personality, like, dis- uh, like disappeared inside Piccolo, there were still traces of him. Like, and it was more like they merged. So, um, I, I can kind of see that. But, yeah, I, I was kind of disappointed with that. Especially considering, um, the next, um, like, the, it, it, the episode, this particular arc did a lot, a couple of, uh, or... I don't know if it if a couple, but it definitely did. A, it did a cliffhanger where like Vegeta and Frost are about to fight. Next episode, Vegeta just like goes Super Saiyan and just punches Frost in the tummy and like just knocks him out. And I'm just like, really? You know, it would have been cool if like I don't know, maybe F- Frost like I don't know, maybe he was hiding a second for another form and it looked like cooler or something, or maybe because like if you're gonna d- treat it as Vegeta trying to get closure on the Frieza thing. Because even though he beat the shit out of Frieza in the movie and the Resurrection F arc, you know, he didn't actually kill Frieza. So, I don't know. Maybe he feels like, I want to kill Frieza. Ba-da-ba-do-ba-da-ba-deba or whatever. Which uh, I should note that uh, both Goku and Vegeta, they go regular Super Saiyan. Um, which it, I, I'm glad they did because I know there was some confusion as to whether or not uh, because of... Uh, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan... Oh, no, ex- excuse me, uh, Super Saiyan Blue. Because um, that's official now. Uh, I know there's a bit of confusion between uh, uh, Super Saiyan Blue and regular Super Saiyan. Like, oh, can they can they go regular Super Saiyan? And, you know, they can. And, you know, uh, they actually did some... Goku did something pretty cool with Super Saiyan Blue. But, um... And I'll get to that later, because that was definitely a highlight with uh, the... Um, and that was definitely a highlight with the arc, with this particular arc. Um, let's see. Um, so after that, yeah, Vegeta beats him up, and then next he fights a uh, Mageta, who's like a I think that's his name. Um, I know Konzenshu sort of um, spec uh, speculated that uh, it was a pun of uh, Mazinger Z and Getter Robo, possibly. And he's basically a giant robot, and uh, he. He fights, um, he fights Vegeta. Vegeta beats him up. And then this next episode, uh, or in the next part, he fights, uh, Kaba. You know, the Mutt get a fight, you know. He's really hot. That one, it was kind of interesting just from the standpoint of, uh, Vegeta fighting someone that's not a martial artist. I actually kind of liked that. Uh, for another comparison, in Project Cross Zone 2, I, it's, it'd be kind of like how X and Zero being reploids, like they're fighting, they're not fighting Mavericks or robots. Or, they're fighting some, but like most of them are like either humans or different kind of androids or monsters. And I, that's kind of interesting. And that's, I kind of like that. 
And it's also a bit of a throwback to Dragon Ball a little bit, if you think about it. Because, you know, in Dragon Ball, you know, Goku fought all kinds of people. Um. So, yeah. Um, and he, he basically wins by, like, you know, doing his cool thing. And, like, he, he, call, he makes fun of, uh, he calls, uh, Megato like a, uh, like some name and it hurts his feelings. That's how he ultimately wins the final blow. Um, he ultimately like breaks through like the uh, barrier because what he's doing is making Vegeta really hot and sweaty, and not in the way that Ryo Hazuki likes in Shinmu. Um, <laughs> uh, but then next he fights Kaba, and this one, this one is definitely kind of different, and it's a different shows a different side of Vegeta. I actually had to defend. Um, this series to a friend who posted a giant rant on YouTube talking about how, like, he didn't like... Um, I'm not going to name him either because there's just no point. But uh, he wasn't pleased with Super, and I, I, you know, spoke my piece. But this was the last episode that he watched. Um, and, of course, here it's like, you know, Kaba's like, teach me how to go Super Saiyan. And Vegeta's like, what the fuck? You have the gall to ask me how to go Super Saiyan? Ugh! And, like, he just beats up Kaba. And Kaba's like, I'm gonna kill... And he's like, "And I'm gonna kill you, Kaba, and I'm gonna kill your whole fucking family! And, of course, he, he doesn't actually say fucking. That'd be kind of funny. But then Kaba goes Super Saiyan. And Vegeta still wins. But, like, it was kind of cool, because it... Um, what Vegeta was actually doing was trying to teach Kaba how to go Super Saiyan. He's like, the way you do it is by getting angry and I can understand why this would make some people angry or this would upset some people seeing Vegeta not be all like I don't care Prince of all sins I'm just gonna kill everyone but what people need to remember is that this is not the same Vegeta that he was in the androids and even the Frieza like by the Majin Buu he let's see okay so let's break Gohan was was like 11 and by the end and like he's 18 so seven years without Goku Vegeta has has had the chance to calm down he's more relaxed he's different especially considering you know he you know there's the whole speculation on like some people will argue it's not speculation I'm gonna call it speculation because you know well after this arc it's kind of debunked but uh, uh people were thinking that Vegeta was actually stronger than Goku since he was training with Whis for longer and and the main thing is that, like, the the whole reason why people are saying this is because of some key dialogue and key scenes when Goku first starts training with uh, Whis and Vegeta. Because Vegeta is given some more, um, one, he's given uh, more uh, challenges. He's given, he's given harder challenges than Goku during, like, their uh, training regimen. And, um... Uh, Vegeta is also shown training after Goku goes to sleep just to, you know, do stuff. And also, um, Vegeta, he is, he's shown to be more used to things. And also Goku's like, but wait, I thought you were, had already surpassed me, Vegeta. And the thing is, I, I feel like that, that kind of, that line in particular, the people point is like, oh, that's that shows that Goku is actually behind Vegeta. I think that that shows that Goku is still ahead. Or at the very least, Vegeta knows that now that Goku is here, he's going to catch up and surpass again. Because Goku is just a wild, he's just a wild boy. He's he he can catch up, and not to mention he 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 does catch up. Like let's be real, he Vegeta will always be second banana. I think. Uh, he's Vegeta has risen to be one of my favorite characters, if not my all-time favorite character. Yes, he is potentially dethroning future Trunks. Um, uh, though uh, Tien, he kind of he's kind of risen to power um, after reading the manga, and what, you know, I have a lot of favorite characters. Like this is like you can tell I really like a series when I don't have just one definitive favorite character, where I have like just several. But uh, anyway, um. But, uh, yeah, I feel like people sort of looked at the episode a little bit. I think I, most people, I think, probably understand it. Um, and I hate to use that term to make it sound like people are, like, confused or whatever. But I think, I think that, uh, we need to, as fans, I understand that there are a lot of cool moments, but we need to remember this is a martial arts comedy. 
It's not just drama, 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 high morals. This is also a comedy. And it's also meant to be... It's a kid's show, too. Like, think about the target audience. Um, It just happened to have a lot of cool moments. And part of it is due to the dub. And some of those parts, hardcore fans may consider inaccuracies. But, um... Or dubisms. Um, Though, I imagine if Super does get dubbed by Funimation, which it probably will... Um... It'll be of high quality while also, you know, it, it'll be fine. But, um, and I actually thought the episode was cool because it showed that, you know, Vegeta, he's not angry all the time anymore. He's, he's, di- I actually kind of like that. He's not just driven by pride. You know, if anything, his family is his pride. Like, he's proud to be Vegeta, the husband of Bulma, uh, we'll say. Because I know some people are like, uh, did they even get married? Uh, probably not. Uh, the father of trunks, you know. It's like, that's that's sort of his, that's his real pride now. Um, not to mention, it just shows that, like, you know, he was trying to teach. He That actually shows a bit of goodness in Vegeta. That he's like, oh, I'll try to help this guy. Um, and, of course, he goes Super Saiyan Blue and just, like, punches, and, like, sucker punches Cup and, like, knocks him out. And then, of course, the last fight is with Hit. Who can freaking step through time? He's an assassin. He's voiced by the Japanese Wolverines, which was kind of cool. Um, now, of course, he defeats Vegeta because he can, like, time skip and whatnot. But then Goku, he steps in. Um, because, and the way they explain it is that because Frost um, was uh, disqualified, technically, like, Goku can still fight. Like, they kind of change rules and, like, add rules, like... As the story goes on, it just kind of shows how fickle Shampa and Beerus are and how sort of, like, dysfunctional they are. Um, you know. I actually kind of liked, um... I I feel like Beerus... By the end of the episodes, I feel like he's sort of put in his place a little bit. I know that's I know that's going to sound kind of weird thinking, like, what do you mean put in his place? He's the god of destruction. He's the most powerful character. But... As we learn, like uh, Monaka actually isn't very strong, and he was only he was only uh, he he only uh, was brought over to um, motivate Goku and Vegeta, particularly Goku. So it turns out Goku is actually the strongest person Beerus has ever fought, um, which is kind of funny. Um, so from that standpoint, Beerus already has sort of like a, someone who matches him in power, and two, like. In the last episode, where they kind of get they get a slight rematch, it's it's different. I'll get into that later. But like, there's there's not really a clear winner. Like, Beers does kind of get the edge on him, but a little bit. But um, you know, I've, I've and Bulma she kind of talks to Beers, especially when they introduce uh, another character who's actually uh, power wise and divinity wise actually higher than both Shampa and Beerus but uh yeah so anyway like Goku he ends up figuring out hit some time skip thing and is able to defeat it but then like a uh, hit he adapts and actually in- learns to increase his time skip um and I feel like the point here with hit is that he's basically like he in terms of like his adaptability and like ability and power and strength he's basically the Goku of universe 6 and I feel like that was sort of what they were trying to go with here with their fight is that Goku was based in a way fighting himself and that, you know, because Goku, he, he sort of learned, he sort of figured things out as the fight goes on and he he uh, gets stronger as the fight continues. Like, not even just the Saiyan thing where, like, you know, come back from almost being killed and you come back stronger. Like, he, he adapts to, like, the situation and whatnot. And he, and he, you know, he breaks limits and whatnot. It's sort of the same way. So, and the episode preview made it look like that Hit was actually going to, um, going to, uh, win, which he does ultimately do, um, though I, I, yeah, I remember, um, I was just trying to make sure I wasn't confusing things, but, like, basically he was trying to, basically it was sort of like an out-Goku, like, Hit's whole thing was that he was trying to out Goku. Goku is basically what happened, but Goku gets pretty far into beating him, and they get pretty close. Um, 
and uh, he changes his stance like every like every like obstacle he gets and the coolest thing that happens is that uh Goku he goes Super Saiyan Blue but he also does Kaioken yeah he did Kaioken that was awesome he does Kaioken Super Saiyan Blue I'm like that's awesome that is so awesome like cuz I remember in the uh during the PyCon fight back in the filler before Majin Buu he does Super Kaioken um but of course since it's filler it doesn't actually exist but but now we have fucking Kaioken Super Saiyan Blue and I think it's done more faithfully here um because at this point Kaioken like it's it's not like a, a different form it's like an, an it's like an amplifier it's like an extra thing so it it adds to his power and of course he's burning through like key or chi or whatever you want to call it and like burning through like all his stamina but he's able to like go faster than time and like out time skip hit and like just have he had a lot of power and like he was doing a bunch of shit like he was basically winning but uh from what i remember i may be misconf- i may be misremembering but i remember uh goku ends up throwing the match I-, I actually i think that's what happened because of what happens afterwards um of course, Beerus gets mad, and the way the episode preview for this particular episode is shown, it makes it look like that Hit actually won, because they show, like, Goku sort of, like, lying down, and, like, they're doing, like, a panning shot of Hit looking down at him, and then they show, like, um, Beerus is, like, they, like, you know how, like, when a character is just, like, super upset, like, really angry, like, they'll do that thing where, like, there's the shade over their eyes, so you can't see their eyes, or if they're really upset, they do that, too. Um... They showed that, and I'm thinking, like, oh, does Goku lose? But And technically he does, but he gives up, and Beerus gets mad, obviously. But then, like, Monaka, he fights. <laughs> it's funny. Um, Hit actually throws that fight, too, so Monaka actually wins. And uh, it's it's sort of, it's kind of explained that it was more like Hit was getting even with Goku. Um, and uh, I think that's how they, ex- I don't entirely understand Hit's, full motivation for it uh just besides the fact that he was trying to like return the favor and throw the fight like i i understood that part but i didn't understand like the rest of everything else um or that's the way i see it at least um so ultimately universe seven they win uh but champa champa gets mad he's like about to kill all of his universe Six people, and Goku's about to step in, but Bears is all like, oh, you've had your time, like, bow down to us, which is kind of funny, because, again, I still, I feel like Goku could actually, um, I mean, I know, like, it's imp- it was implied at the end of the movie, and I think even implied, like, near the end of Beerus's arc, was that Beerus wasn't using his full strength, but, I mean, even still, like, the fact remains that Goku's, like, the only person right now who has even, like, come close to matching him. And now it's like... And they, they showed some scenes of, like, Beerus looking kind of nervous. So I think he understands, like, holy shit. Like, you could argue, like, well, it's he's probably nervous because he sees a lot of potential in Goku. But that's the thing. He sees a lot of potential in Goku. So Goku could surpass Beerus. I really think so. And, of course, you know, now in this fucking series, like, Goku's gonna... Like, Goku can really rise to the to the to Beerus's power. I think. I think it's mainly. I I kind of see Beerus as more of one of the good guys now, and that's sort of what I was saying earlier with like the way Bulma talks to him uh, later on, and it, just how he's. I feel that's what I meant by he's put in his place a little bit because he doesn't seem as like overpoweringly threatening as uh as uh he did like early on with Battle of Gods and even. Um, and even like the early parts of Super, um, even with Shampa because he he matches Beerus' strength. You know, Goku could probably beat Shampa too, um, possibly. Um, but before uh, Shampa's about to kill everyone, the this character named Zinnul, which translates to the King of All, the God of All, basically just the God of everything. So God, <laughs> um, this uh. This uh, story's uh, equivalent to the actual, um, like, God God. I don't know if necessarily the Christian God, because I think, I think Kami, the character Kami, was intended to be that. Sort of like the Christian God, or 
or maybe the Buddhist god or something like the higher power of uh, Earth, but you know the series being as universal pun intended as it is. Or not, that's not even a pun. That's just fact. Anyway, um, Zeno comes up and he, and Beerus and Champa are like, "What the fuck? No, not you. You're he's super powerful and shit." And he and he's all like, "Hey, I came to." To let you guys know, like, hey, I noticed you guys were doing this tournament without my permission. It's like, oh, we're sorry. Like, eh, it's cool. Like, I, it's fine. Like, it looked kind of fun. I think I might hold a tournament with all the universes. So that this is basically foreshadowing of what's probably going to end up being either the second to last or the last arc of Dragon Ball Super, however long it continues for. I think it's supposed to go for 100 episodes. Which, given Toei with their original stuff, um, even though this is based on uh, another... Um, well, no, because, like, Saint Seiya was, like, 90... Saint Seiya Omega was, like, 98 episodes. Like, their original... Their, like, original stuff, with the exception of Soul of Gold and uh, Sailor Moon Crystal, just because it's not there yet, though it's probably going to be 100 episodes. Let's let's be real. Um, or possibly, maybe even 50, or what, whatever. You, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> and so, that yeah, basically... Basic, basically foreshadowing for like another big arc which I think that'll be interesting and it'll probably uh, be like this arc this tournament arc but like at a larger scale it's not the next arc we already know what the next arc's gonna be it's actually kind of interesting and kind of vague um, but um and so uh, yeah, he he, com- he just basically comes in to be all like yeah I just want to say it's cool guys and he goes off and he sounds like a kid it's kind of funny and Goku you know being Goku he's like he's not "Quote unquote," he's disrespectful. I mean, not because like he he like barges and like I want to chat with him and like he shakes his hand like lifts him up. <laughs> and he's like, "You're funny. I like you. You're pretty cool." And then he gives Goku a, a blowjob. No. Um, speaking of which, there's the funny scene where there's the uh, Galactic King and Goku goes to shake his hand and jo- and Jocko's like, <gasps> and he's like, "That's my penis." <laughs> that was funny. Um, and Goku wipes his hands off. So. If anyone actually is wondering if Goku's gay or not, the answer is no, because I don't think he'd wipe his hands off if he liked penis. If anything, he'd probably lick his hands and no, anyway. I won't go there. This is a this is not a sexual story. Oh, by the way, speaking of godly things, um, and higher powers, uh Supreme Kai and Kabito split back into their regular forms, which I thought it was actually kind of weird. Like, of all the things, why? Because, uh, t- truth be, on- to be honest, I didn't really like that. Um, mainly just because I felt like at this point, the Elder Kai sort of, like, took over the role, quote-unquote, as the Supreme Kai, whereas uh, uh, Kabito Kai, or I guess in the Japanese version, uh, Kabito Shin, um, I-, I just call him Kabito Kai. Uh, I felt like Kabito Kai at that point had sort of taken over the assistant role and I actually kind of liked that um so now we have two supreme kais is basically what it amounts to um I'm not entirely sure why they did that I I guess like maybe they felt like fans were kind of annoyed like why don't they go back to normal or something I don't know maybe they I'm sure there was some reason for it though you would think they would need they need to revive King Kai is what they need to do if they're if they're talking about fans being bothered by stuff that characters need to do they need to revive King Kai, but I don't know. Maybe they will in some other arc or something. Um, but uh, yeah. And so they get the Super Dragon Balls. They're looking for one more, which Bull made like a giant one to like make uh to find um the last one. She was actually kind of nervous about Beerus's wish because she was worried that like you know I might make a wish to like blow stuff up or something. I didn't entirely understand what he was saying in that scene, but Bulma was shown to be kind of scared, so she goes ahead and makes um, the uh, Super Dragon Ball radar, and they find, it turns out, the Dragon Ball was actually disguised as a giant planet, which they uncover it and shit. Um, which Monok actually helps them out because uh, he actually sees the world out because it turns out he's actually a delivery man. Um, which makes us makes me wonder like how exactly Beerus found like was Beerus ordering like space pizza and he was all like oh you I need you to pretend to be a martial artist for me <laughs> um yeah that'd be really funny um but anyway I've had to do a couple of pauses so that might actually be sort of an awkward 
pause, so sorry. But anyway, um, so uh, they get the Super Dragon Balls and shit, <laughs> and um, they um, um, uh, that Beerus basically wishes that uh, the Earth of Universe Six gets restored so that Shampa and Vados can have uh, the the um the uh, food there. And he's like, oh, that was nice of you. He's like, yeah. He's like, I only did that so he, so he would owe me. And that was kind of funny, but um, yeah. And you know, they all go back, and all's good. But of course, then the next episode, which is like the first sort of like quote unquote filler episode, is they have a big party celebrating their victory, and Monaka shows up. And they're like, if Goku shows up. Or when Goku shows up, he's going to want to fight Monaka. So we need to hide the fact that Monaka's not weak. Or we need to hide the fact that Monaka's weak. Because they all figure out that, like, he's weak. Because, like, I think it's it's Goten or Trunks punch him, the like, accidentally punch him in the face or knock him over. And so they realize he's weak. Um, But Hercule had made, like, a costume because he wanted them to be, like, a mascot for him. And so they made, like, a costume, like, a big costume of, uh, um... Monaka, and Goku comes in like, "Is I want to fight you, Monaka," and so Beerus ends up having to like dress up as Monaka and the costume like fight, um, uh, Monaka. Um, and it's kind of funny how like they all try to sort of uh, uh, trick him into like stopping so they can switch out the Monakas. Like uh, Tien has Chiaotsu stun Goku, which only lasts a little bit because Goku, being as powerful as he is, Chiaotsu can't um. Uh, do it for very long. Um, uh, Krillin does his solar flare, and that's how they, uh, that's how they, uh, do it. <laughs> but, like, and the fight is so intense with, uh, Goku and the, the, uh, dressed up Beerus as Monaka that, like, the costume actually starts to rip, and you can tell that, like, it's Beerus in there. And Goku, uh, pff, Goku, uh, uh, Vegeta and Piccolo come in, and he's like, oh, Monaka's... He's controlling us. Uh, my hand is moving on his own. Uh, and he's like, oh, I'm also moving on my own. Uh, that was so funny. That was like hysterical. I was actually, I actually kind of chuckled out loud. I was watching it at night, so I had to be quiet. But because, you know, living with your parents. But um, it was kind of, it was actually kind of funny. And uh, they ultimately, uh, uh, we ultimately like stops the fight, and uh, Goku and Monaka's the truth of Monaka is safe. Goku doesn't realize that he's weak. Yamcha almost spills the beans, or almost accidentally spilled the spills the beans. But Goku's like, "Oh, you can split into two different people. Wow, you're pretty baller." Um, it'll be interesting to see how if Goku will figure out. I kind of hope he does. Um. I don't, or I don't know. I guess he doesn't necessarily have to, but um, the next episode is supposed to involve Pan and Goku's uh, key going out of control. I'll probably talk about that episode in the next arc, which uh, is apparently going to be about a dark Goku, a quote-unquote black Goku. And now I know what we all want to say, how we all want to portray that one, but I won't. No, you you can't. No, I won't go there. But Future Trunks is actually going to return, which is awesome. So it'll be cool to see him back doing stuff. So it'll be interesting to see how that arc goes. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys again for that one. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, overall, um, I liked it. I thought the action was good and the humor was funny. I kind of wish that Piccolo had gotten a bit, a bit of better treatment. I almost would have preferred if he fought Botamo first and won and then lost to Frost and then Vegeta took over. So, something like I think the I think the order and sort of like how the fights went should have been sort of altered a little bit just to because it just seemed like Piccolo was only there just to kind of waste time. Like that was almost a filler episode in a way. Um it's like he didn't really need to be there. Either that or maybe... I don't know. Like, I, it would have been nice to have Piccolo actually do something. Maybe he'll do something in the next arc. And I kind of hope... If it's meant to sort of be similar to the Android stuff, hopefully all the characters who um aren't Saiyans and, may, and aren't as strong as, like, Goku and Vegeta and Gohan um, 
will get to do stuff. Like, even Goten and Trunks, like, even though they're considerably weaker than the three of them, they're still sort of considered a bit top. I think, like, they're, at the very least, they're, like, in fourth and fifth place, which I guess is is both saying something and not saying something at the same time. But, yeah, that's what I thought about uh, uh, the Shampa slash Universe 6 tournament arc of uh, Dragon Ball Super. I look forward to seeing the next one, which I think is supposed to start early June. Um, so, uh, yeah. Pretty cool. This is Flamzer on AKU Sasuke signing out. See you guys for the next one.